Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about yesterday's arraignment, his third in the last several months, of Donald Trump on criminal charges. These, of course, the most serious charges, the federal charges growing out of the post-election period and 1-6 in particular. Okay, arraignments are pretty straightforward affairs. Usually nothing much happens. Here, nothing much happened, but but uh, two or three things did happen that I think are quite noteworthy. Let's just start with the basics that were the same as any time else. It, first of all, he was treated like a regular defendant more than has been the case in the past. He was fingerprinted, not with ink, but fingerprinted and, uh, and had to wait 15 minutes and then came in and was addressed as Mr. Trump, not as Mr. President. And, uh, the main purpose of an arraignment is to, uh, have the indictment either read out or you can waive that, but the idea is for the defendant to enter a plea and and um, testify, it's technically that, that uh, he or she understands the charges. Trump had to do that and entered a plea of not guilty. We're told that his general glum, glowering countenance got a little bit more. He sort of looked down and said, not guilty, etc. cetera. And, uh, you know, five more minutes of stuff thereafter. That's the building blocks of any arraignment, and it goes quick. But just a few things here to note. First, he received admonitions from the magistrate judge. The magistrate is, is sort of, a, is, I call it a judge, and it is a, a judge, but not in, in full federal court constitutional way, and is someone who's sort of adjunct to the trial judge, t Judge Tanya Chutkin, who will be running this case. Um, and uh, gave, supplied certain admonitions. Now, some of them are pretty uh, straightforward. Technically, Trump is now out on on his own recognizance, but that's a, a a kind of a bond. And the magistrate told him, "Don't commit any crimes while you're out, or you could be brought back in." A lot of people, uh, including some of my uh, punditry colleagues, read a lot into that, but that's completely standard. A little less standard, not unheard of, but a little less standard was an admonition not to do anything to try to intimidate, influence, even get in touch with witnesses uh, on his own. So that, you know, people's ears pricked up at that and understandably. Um, then they moved to uh, setting the next hearing. And this is what I thought was most interesting and and distinctive. So the magistrate judge, and this wouldn't happen in a normal arraignment of which there are, you know, dozens every week, uh, had conferred with the, the trial judge, the district court judge, Judge Tanya Chutkin. And he told the parties, uh, that they should, the government should, uh, give a brief in seven, in seven days, a short piece of paper saying, here's the schedule they, therefore, and, um, then Trump, five days after that, and then a hearing on the 28th at which she will set a trial schedule, the magistrate announced. That's unusual. Most um, typically, there would be just, okay, you'll next see the judge, you'll have a status conference. At that first status conference, you'll set the next hearing to set the schedule. So I thought that this made fairly evident that the judge here is focused also on schedule, on time, as um, Jack Smith and, in fact, the country surely uh, all are. And it was a positive, I thought, sign that she is uh, eager and sees the sort of public exigency. This isn't a pro or anti-Trump um, point. It's a pro-democracy point that the people uh, it's a pretty big fact if someone's been judged beyond a reasonable doubt guilty of these multiple conspiracies. And it's a fact that voters should be armed with when they decide who should be their next president. And it looks like she'll be moving with dispatch to make um, that happen. So we'll see. There's strategic choices now for the U.S. and Trump uh, that parallel what they did in Mar-a-Lago. How soon will the U.S. call for trial? How far Trump will not be able to get away, for example, by saying, oh, let's not even set anything. He's going to have to come in with some date, can't be too far away, or he'll just be ignored, et cetera. So that, that part will be interesting. So that, I thought, was um, 
the biggest takeaway from the uh, arraignment that the judge is already ha conferred, and you have to be sure that you know all the things that the magistrate said were. A magistrate said, in fact, expressly had conferred with uh, the judge, and that that tells you something there. Also, notably and very unusually, were judges in the courtroom. Uh, Chief Judge Boesberg was there. Judge Moss was there. A few others. I don't take this to be uh, a sign of the sort of spectator appeal. Uh, I take it rather to be a sign, and, and Boesberg is the chief judge of kind of solidarity or support for the court as an institution. Um, there's, we already have Trump savaging or trying to savage the judge as far left and, you know, this and that. Uh, and, uh, the court, I think, wants to insist on the court as a single entity, as an institution and push back against any effort to vilify or single her out. And I think that's what that was about. Um, and, you know, there was other kinds of, um, you know, interesting dynamics. Apparently Trump never looked at Smith. Smith looked some at Trump, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But to me, the, um, big point is that the trial judge already has been in touch with the magistrate and rather than having a, a hearing and then another week or so to, to set this, she was ready to go and the parties need to be ready to go and will be submitting memoranda with their own schedules, and she's going to set one come August 28th. That's pretty big news, and I think it points uh, in the direction I've been suggesting uh, at this case as built for speed and being the one that's going to go before Mar-a-Lago. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.